We'll turn to Professor Nishino Junya, who is Associate Professor in the Department of Political Science at Keio University. Uh, Professor Nishino is also a Harvard Yanjing uh, alum. He was here as an exchange scholar uh, in uh, last year, 2011 to 2012. Uh, and currently, he is a visiting scholar at the Woodrow Wilson School and also George Washington University in Washington, D.C. He received his BA and MA from Keio University, but his PhD from Yonsei in South Korea, and served in the Japanese government, uh, both in Tokyo and also in the Japanese embassy in Seoul, and specializes particularly in the question of economic connections between Japan and South Korea. So, Professor Nishino. Uh, thank you for inviting me today, and uh, uh, it's my pleasure and honor to attend uh, this Harvard Yenchin uh, Institute annual roundtable. Uh, I especially, I expect, I wish to expect extend my thanks to Professor uh, Perry and all the staff of the Yenchin Institute. I was uh, Yenchin last year, so I'm very uh, glad to attend. Uh, here today. So my background and major is uh, actually politi politics and international relations of East, East, East Asia, especially focusing on Japan and Korea relations. So today I will speak about the experience of Japan and South Korea in, in broader perspective in the case of uh, cross-national lessons in East Asia. To give a break, to give a brief overview of the, the trajectory of learning and cooperation between Japan and South Korea, have evolved in three phases. Uh, number one, phase one, uh, South Korea expanded its economy from 1960s to 1990s by emulating post-war Japanese economic politics policies. And in phase two, following the South Korea's democratization, Japan has tried to gain lessons from South Korea's vigorous political and social movement and to emulate its dynamism. And so South Korea's recent outstanding successes in the international community and the global market have motivated Japan to learn a lesson from South Korea's global strategy. And finally, uh, today in, in phase three, uh, shared values such as democracy and market economy have brought both countries closer to work together in addressing common internal and external challenges such as declining birth rates, aging populations, and widening inequality at the domestic level, and the rise of China at the regional uh, level. So let me discuss the three phases in more, in more depth. I described first phase uh, South Korea's economic growth based on the Japanese post-war economic framework in my PhD thesis uh, when I was in Yonsei in South Korea. Some literature emphasizes the importance of Japanese influence in, in South Korea's economic success, including Japanese legacies of colonial modernity, Japan-led divisions of labor in the region, and economic cooperation involving economic assistance, foreign direct investment, and technology transfer after the diplomatic normalization between the two countries in 1965. It was true that all these factors offer valuable clues to the underpinning of the dynamics of the South Korea's rapid economic growth. But under the strong state-led economy of the Park Chung-hee government, uh, Park chung is uh, now a uh, father of current president of Park Geun-hye. So the industrial policies which reflected the uh, emulation, or more precisely speaking, imitation of post-war Japanese institution was also one of the critical factors in South Korea's economic growth. So when you see the promotion act or laws for each industry sector in South Korea, such as machinery industry and electronic industry, you could find the structure and article of this promotion act were almost the same of, these, of those which adopted during post-war 
reconstruction period in Japan. In fact, South Korea's Machinery Industry Promotion Act, which is enacted in 1967, was by and large a replica of Japan, Japan's tempo, temporary act to promote the machinery industry, introduced in 1956. And South Korea's Electronic Industry Promotion Act, enacted in 1969, shows even more similarity with Japan's temporary act to promote an indust electronic industry adopted in 1957. So you can see the 10-year time lag. And Park chung hee government also introduced uh, the concept of general trade trading company, uh, Sogo Shosha in Japanese, from Japan in 1970s. So these old policies and institutions were the important devices for developing the South Korea's industry. So definitely post-war Japanese economic success had been the model and the useful reference for South Korea's economic high growth. But especially since the economic crisis in 1990s, South Korea have sold, South Koreans have sold that their economic growth system which had learned from post-war Japanese success has not worked anymore. And from their perspectives, Japan's so-called lost 20 years has proved that there's nothing anymore for South Korea to learn from Japan in terms of its economic framework. In contrast, nowadays, many Japanese have thought that they should run from South Korea's recent success in global arena under the name of Global Korea or International Korea Strategy. So Samsung's huge successes and Sony's decline in the global market are giving kind of psychological impact on the Japanese public. But it, it's still under discussion on what exactly Japan should learn from South Korea in terms of revitalizing its economy. And meanwhile, Japan has also paid attention to South Korea's political dynamism, especially in terms of election campaign, interestingly. For example, the blacklisting campaign in 2000 South Korea's general election, in which civic groups targeted corrupt and incompetent candidates and informed the public not to vote for them, draw much attention from the Japanese. And some Japanese civic group followed and emulate this campaign. Another example is that, actually last week, the Japanese Diet passed a bill to permit the use of the internet and social networking service as an election campaign tool. So this was obviously affected by the South Korea's vigorous election campaign using these communication devices. And finally, uh, importantly, so based on shared values such as democracy and market economy, so both countries, Japan and Korea, had started to work together closely in addressing common challenges they are facing. So these are declining birth rate, aging population, widening inequality <coughs> at the domestic level, and the rise of China at the regional level. So it is true that this kind of cooperation between two countries are still in the initial stages, but both countries have tried to find ways to cooperate more in various fields. As one of the efforts to <coughs> find ways to deal with these challenges more effectively, I would like to refer to the joint research project for a new era in Japan-South Korea relations, so which was started in 2009 based on the agreement of the summit meeting between the two countries, and which I actually I have been committed as, a, as a one of member, members. The project submitted the first term report to the both government in, two, in October 2010, and we have just completed the second term. The major goal of the, this project was to explore the field in which Japan and South Korea could contribute together to the international community as well as East Asia. 
what was emphasized in the, this report is that Japan and South Korea have to work together closely to take the lead in agenda setting, rule setting, and norm diffusion to design a new regional architecture for peace and prosperity in East Asia. In terms of regional prosperity, one of the biggest challenges and opportunities for both countries is the rise of China. Clearly, China's growth is an opportunity for Japan and South Korea because China is one number one trade partner for them. So, and Japan and South Korea need to contribute to stable Chinese development because unstable China will give them huge negative impact in terms of inter-regional economic relationship. So from Japanese perspective, this is why Japan and South Korea jointly encourage China to be more cooperative partner, not only in the region, but also in the international community as a whole. I think the trilateral cooperation among China, Japan, and South Korea has become a good ground for learning each other through the meeting at exchanges at the various uh, levels in terms of policy learning. Actually, uh, we three, our three countries had the summit meeting each year from 2008-2009, but this uh, trilateral meeting started in late 1990s on the sideline of ASEAN meeting. So now we have a, a just three countries summit meeting every year. And we also have a various level meeting every time. So I hope I hope this uh, trilateral cooperation uh, will be a good ground for uh, learning each other in East Asia, and also hope this uh, it will become it will develop more, not only for learning each other but also for the peace and the prosperity in East Asia. I stop. Thank you. Thank you very much.